gotta overwork, overwork. Overwork that painting. Overworked paintings? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. Overworked paintings. Like your paintings start showing up late for their shifts, and then you catch them sending interstudio emails to one another about <laughs> their working conditions. Bobby's Tips for Artists, because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artist! Today we're going to talk about a subject that I actually have a difficult time with, and that is the idea or the concept that your artwork may be overworked. So we got a question from... Yolanda Peters. Can you do a video about overworking a painting or what that even means? I've had people saying don't overwork your paintings without explaining what they mean or how they see that I overwork my paintings. To me, my work looks fine, but now I'm starting to question every brushstroke and decision I make. I would be like, could you elaborate, good sir? Could you elaborate, good sir? So the idea of overworking a painting has to do with three things. Either you are over blending and adding a little bit to color so it's getting all muddied up, which usually occurs when you go back and you're trying to fix something. So, so some people think that overworking is going back and over fixing things, adding too much paint or adding too many details so that the composition or the main focal point of the piece gets lost. That's what a lot of people consider overworking. Now, here's the thing about that, though, is that if you were to take the phrase overworking and create a opposite phrase for it, which would be underworking, and looking at artwork like that, you would realize that a lot of times what some people may consider overworking, it's simply because that's not their aesthetic or that's not their style. Yeah, so a lot of times I look at Rafi's paintings and I like negative space, so I think he's done. But he's not done. There's still like 50 more layers that he's going to put on there. Exactly. And it's a matter of personal taste. It is a matter of personal taste. The, the paintings where there's a lot of white background, I may consider those underworking but at the same time i really have a respect and a love for the ability to really minimize the subject matter in a piece and have a lot of white space that's amazing to me i also think that people that are able to cram a lot of information into a piece and still have the piece be very cohesive and lovely even though there is a lot going on I think that that is amazing. So I have a really hard time with the concept of a piece either being overworked or underworked, unless, of course, it wasn't deliberately done. So how do you know when your piece is done? I know when my piece is done whenever I feel like the piece is done. All of those things that I listed, over blending, uh, going back and fixing mistakes, and putting too much stuff in my pieces, that's all stuff that I'm guilty of. Some people may say like, oh, well, that piece is overworked, and some people may just like the piece. The only time that I would say that you question your brushstrokes is if you look at the piece and you think to yourself, you know what, I'm overworking this piece right now. Yeah. That is the only opinion that matters. That's a gut feeling. I know I'm done with a piece of jewelry when I look at it and think, I'm done. And I know I've overworked a piece of jewelry if it's starting to lose whatever the central focus of the piece was supposed to be. That. Like I'm overcrowding the focal stone, or I'm starting to lose texture by adding too much texture. Like a song with too many tracks, and you can no longer hear the, the main melody of the song. That usually happens when you are working on a piece and you are second-guessing and questioning every single decision that you're making. What ends up happening is that you start to make a lot of mistakes, and then you have to cover those mistakes and cover those mistakes and cover those mistakes and then the piece almost never feels like it's fully completed or done because you've lost focus on where you were heading in the first place but do you know who's the authority on that you and you. only you. you only you know if your piece is done and whether it's how you wanted it or whether it's over or under work chances are if somebody is coming in and telling you that you're overworking a piece it's another artist and this other artist may have a different aesthetic than you do. Maybe you like putting a lot of information in your piece, and this artist doesn't do that. And so they're going to look at your piece, and they're going to say like, oh yeah, you're really overworking that. The only time that anybody's ever told me that I'm overworking a piece, or that I overworked a piece, it's when it's another artist coming in and giving me their criticism on the piece. And honestly, that kind of criticism... 
unless they are following it up with something and telling you like, yeah, you could have done without this or you could have done without that. Or like this over here is taking away from the focal point. I'm having a hard time focusing unless they are giving you constructive criticism and just telling you that you overworked a piece. Then I just, I don't care. Just because people are giving you their opinions on the art and saying that maybe it's overworked or it's underworked, I would not allow that to cause you to second guess your brush strokes. Because really when it comes down to it, your opinion is the only one that matters. You know genuinely if you're creating that piece and if you're overworking it. And a lot of times if you're in a process where you're overworking it, where you've gotten completely lost as far as which direction you're heading in a piece, you know that the best thing for you to do is step away and then come back to it with a fresh set of eyes. I would say a big red flag is if you feel you're done with a piece, but you see a mistake and you're like, let me just go in and try to correct that mistake, but you know you should leave it alone. Yeah. That to me is overworking. I cannot tell you how many times I've been done with a piece and I think it's beautiful. And there will be one little thing that I'm like, oh, I just... And immediately that insecurity sets in. But what if somebody says something about that thing or whatever, where I'm not being genuine to myself. I'm more concerned about what somebody else might say about the piece versus just leaving it be and then go in and go to do something and then end up messing it up and end up having to fix that mess up. And then it just spiraling out of control. That's the only time that I've really looked at a piece and thought to myself, like I'm freaking overworking this piece. I don't need to be doing this right now. Not to say you shouldn't try to go in and correct things you see if you feel like that's the right thing to do, but if your gut's telling you don't do it, yeah. Trust your gut on Trust this. Trust your gut. There are plenty of times that I go in and I'll look at certain things. I'm like, yeah, that's not good. I need to change that or I need to fix that. And for anybody that says that if you're going in and fixing a lot of mistakes, adding more paint or doing more things to it, Picasso did that all the time. You could, there's so, every artist does that. If you look at x-rays of famous artist paintings, you will see layer upon layer upon layer of different things because they go in there and they fix things. A lot of those famous portraits, you go in there and look at the x-ray and the x-ray is a completely different shape of a portrait, different facial expressions that eventually evolves into what it, the end product is. It's about making sure that you know which direction you want to head in with the painting. And if it looks good to you and you don't feel like it's overworked, then it's not overworked. It is your art. You're the only one that knows whether or not you overworked the piece or you didn't. And really, like Rafi said earlier, don't be afraid if someone gives you that feedback, don't be afraid to say, really? What What are you seeing? Can you elaborate? Yeah, ask them. Ask them, what, are, what is it that you're seeing? And that way you could determine if it's something that maybe you're like, you know, I could have done that differently. And maybe I do agree with you. Or like, all right, well, that's your opinion. You know, and it's funny because that, that comment doesn't work the other way. Nobody ever goes up to someone, it's like, that painting is completely underworked. Oh, I've heard people say that. Really? Yeah, that this look this looks unfinished to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, this looks unfinished to me. Yeah, and it's all relative. It is, <laughs> it is all relative. There are pieces that I look at and that I think to myself, that looks kind of unfinished to me. Mm -hmm. And I know that it doesn't have anything to do with whether or not the piece is finished or not. If the artist deems that the piece is finished then the art is finished. It just has to do with my aesthetic and the way that I work on paintings and what feels finished to me. Rafi's gotten really good at that because I come in and all the time I'm like, ooh, that's beautiful. That's done, right? And he's like, nope. Nope. Not done. Don't even look at it. He'll be like, go to your side of the studio. <laughs> come visit me later. Yeah, come visit me later when I'm done. I will tell you when to come and look at this piece. Mm -hmm. And that's it, you guys. Yolande, hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. That's how I feel. Do not allow anybody's comments to make you question your brush strokes. Because honestly, questioning your brush strokes is what might lead to you losing direction in a piece and then it's becoming actually overworked in your eyes. And you guys, I'm interested in hearing your opinion on what you think something is overworked or if you've ever even questioned that before or if you even knew what it meant because so many people use it as that piece is overworked and then there's no explanation whatsoever behind it. I'll be like, you got that from the random art critique generator, didn't you?
you. <laughs> so if you have any stories for us, just leave them in the comment section below. Also, you guys, I wanted to announce our vlog. Vlog. V -V our vlog. Vlog. We have a vlog channel where you could either catch our adventures, just uh, random adventures with Rafi and Klee. You've got our music. You've got studio creation stuff where we film ourselves creating different things. And also there are a lot of Patreon previews. So a lot of our videos that go on Patreon, we'll share them on that vlog as well. So if you want more of our faces and us out and about and doing things, check out our vlog channel. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios. Adios.